where I am. Welcome to PowerCast with PC. We're going to start in Genesis chapter 22, just verse 5. And um, I'm so excited and so tired because we've been working, but I'm really excited to have you all with us on this morning. Feels like it's been forever since we've been able to be together in person. And I know it's going to take a while for us to figure out how to do this. Some of us scared, but it's all good. Genesis chapter 22, verse 5 says, Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. I want to call your attention to those words because they are so important to what I want to share this morning. He says, we will worship there, and then we will come right back. I want to minister this morning from this idea, this thought. Everybody say this, I am a worshiper. Say it like you mean it. I am a worshiper. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the power of your word. And Father, we just declare that as we minister your word this morning, that you will do what it has sent, what you have sent it out to do. Speak to us this morning. Speak clearly. Speak precisely. Speak specifically to where we are in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As we are navigating through this unprecedented season, time, whatever you want to call it, the reality is is that I believe all of us, if we haven't, we should at least should take some time to reevaluate who we are. I mean, I know we know who God says that we are, and if we don't, we at least have some idea. We know I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. And so I've been ministering much of this year from that perspective, reinforcing, revealing in some instances who we are. But when you talk about who, it is also important for, for us to know that the who is connected to a what. And I believe as we navigate through these weeks going into 2021, I don't think any of us can afford to go into a new year and finish this year without knowing not just who we are, but what we are. Because when God made you, he didn't just have an idea about you. He had an assignment for you. I'll say that again. He didn't just have an idea. He had an assignment. Jeremiah says when he was in, before he was in his mother's womb, he knew him and he formed him. And because God is no respecter of persons, it is very easy for us to understand that that is the same reality for us. That before we were even thought about, before we were even considered in our parents, God knew us. God did not just have an idea. He didn't just have a consideration, but he had a plan for us. And as a result of those plans, we oftentimes talk about the results of the plan. What are the results of the plan? We know that one of those results is that we'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come. We know that some of those results are grace and mercy. And we often preach about the results based upon who and what we are, but we don't often talk too much about the revelation of who and what we are. And when we look at this particular passage of Scripture, the reason why it is important is because this is the first time the word worship is mentioned in the Scripture. And whenever you see something for the first time in the Scripture, there is a hermeneutic, which is just the principles of how to study the Scriptures correctly. First mentioned principle says that the first time something is mentioned in Scripture it reveals the purpose in which it is mentioned, and any other time that it is mentioned after that, it has to fall in line with that first mention of that. So when we first hear worship, 
most of us, when we think about worship, we think about hands lifted and singing slow songs. But the truth is, is that worship is a lifestyle. Everybody say it's a lifestyle. Worship is a lifestyle. I'm worshiping when I wake up. I'm, I'm worshiping when I treat my spouse a particular way. I am worshiping when I go to work. I'm worshiping when I pump my gas. I am worshiping when I'm in the store. I'm worshiping when I'm thinking about cussing you out because I didn't like what you did. And I'm also worshiping when I don't cuss you out. I'm, I'm worshiping because worship is who God created me to be. Now the question becomes not, am I a worshiper? The real question is, what am I worshiping? I see it's going to get ugly in here this morning. What, what am I worshiping? What am I worshiping? Because if God created me to worship, then it should be clearly understood that I was created to worship him. This is why the Bible says, let everything that have breath let it praise the Lord. Why would he tell us to praise the Lord? Because it is possible that we are praising something else. And I believe it is important for us as we are navigating through this year and most importantly getting ready to step into a new year and a whole lot of news that I'll be preaching about in the very near future that I believe we're going to be walking in. It's important for us to realize that God will no longer continue to tolerate doing everything for us while he is simply just a part of our lives. He, we must make the transition from him being a part of our life to him being our life. So we're going to have to come to an understanding. One of the understandings that we're going to have to come to is that God wants us to have not just a good life, not just a fun life, but an abundant life. So you see, what you got to do is you're going to have to detox from some of this church stuff that's been in us that, that God don't want you to do nothing. When I was growing up, everything was a sin. You couldn't go to the movies. You couldn't wear black. You couldn't wear makeup. You couldn't wear earrings. You couldn't wear high heels. We couldn't wear shorts. I remember one time I came to this church and wore shorts, and ten people pulled me to the side to rebuke me. Because we didn't have a under standing. We thought everything was a sin because we never made the leap from being a sinner. We always saw ourselves as sinners saved by grace and not believers who are children of God. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. Somebody ought to just say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. My sin has already been dealt with. The Bible says where there is sin, grace does yet abound. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world, not just the church, but he loved the world, that whosoever would believe in him, do you believe? That whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. All I have to do is accept him. And once I accept him, sin is no longer the conversation. Conversation. Mm -hmm. My conversation now has to shift from not what I've been redeemed from, but what I've been redeemed for. And I've been redeemed to worship. I have a right to worship. I, I came this morning willing to worship. I was tired, but I came because I wanted to worship. I didn't come because I wanted to preach, and I didn't come because I wanted to sing. I came because I wanted to worship. I came because March, he's been good. April, he's been good. June, he's been good. August, he's been good. November, he's been good. And I made a decision that when December came, I'm going to invite somebody to come in here and not play church with me, but worship with me so I couldn't let nothing stop me from I wish I had somebody at home that would just type in I am a worshiper watch this and so Abraham was asked in Genesis 12 would you leave your country would you leave your kindred and would you leave your kind and I'll take you to a place where I'll show you what it is when you get there. And I believe the reason why God asked him in Genesis 12 to leave everybody is because Genesis, in Genesis 12, Abram did not have an infrastructure that would allow him to be a worshiper. He had an infrastructure of people 
who expected him to be who he always was and not people who were willing to become and grow with who God was calling him to be. So God says, in, in, instead of me trying to fix everybody around you, watch this, let me fix you first. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning, but, but every one of us should at least have this understanding that there are some things in me saved, sanctified, and hair blow dried. There's some stuff in me that needs fixing. Better yet, let's get more clear. There are some things in me that need healing. And I can't get to that place without some level of worship. Because there are some things that can only be dealt with in the presence of the Lord. Now watch this. What most of us see the presence of the Lord as is the end all be all. When the truth is, the scriptures teach us that the presence of the Lord is not the end all be all. It is the beginning and the ending. So it starts in his presence and it ends in his presence. But in between his presence, he's got some other tools. Y'all don't want to hear me this morning. And, and, so, and so some of us, that healing is going to require sitting on somebody's couch. For some of us, that healing is going to require having to be vulnerable in places where we have not been vulnerable, talking about things that we had not talked before, participating in things that we felt like weren't for us, going to things that we felt like we didn't have the ability to go to before. It's going to take us having to be stretched out of our norm and pulled into his presence. Because God made therapists too. Watch this. And so by the time we get to 22, Abram has turned into Abraham. God has changed his name. God has given him a new identity. God has given him wealth. And now God is saying, let me show you why I pulled you out. I didn't pull you out because I wanted to have you rich. I didn't pull you out because I wanted people to know your name. I didn't pull you out because you were cute. And I didn't pull you out because you had it all together. I pulled you out because I was looking for somebody that could worship me. And the scriptures give us instructions. If you're going to worship, you must worship in spirit and in truth. And so by the time we get to Genesis chapter 22, God says worship is when you are willing to give me the thing that you think you can't live without. I know, I know you got other children. I know you got a ton of money. I know you got a ton of relationships. But I see the way you see Isaac. I see the way you, you, you respond to Isaac. I see how Isaac makes you feel. I see how your eyes light up when you look at Isaac. So here's what worship is. Worship is not you just lifting your hands and closing your eyes. Worship is finding the thing that you love the most and saying, God, I love you more. In other words, worship is permission to go somewhere that others don't have permission to go to because everybody's not willing to give God the thing that they love. There are some people who just want to come to church. They just want to hear a good message. They want to just sing some songs and go home and be the same person they were the week before. But there are some of us who do not come to the presence of the Lord because of what we want to take, but because of what we want to experience. We want to experience God in a way that the person that I am is no longer fit for who God wants me to be. And the only way that happens is if I come into his presence with thanksgiving and I enter his courts with praise and say, God, if there is anything in my life that I am honoring and putting before you and making greater than you, I need you to come and get it because I don't want anything in my life that's going to take any glory from you and I wish I had about two or three people who could just testify that I may not be there yet but that's where I'm headed I'm coming to a place where when God sees me it's all about him and everything else comes secondary see being worship being a worshiper is having permission to go where others don't have permission to go 
and being able to take others to a place that they cannot go themselves. The word is transcendent. Everybody say transcendent. Somebody type in transcendent. Trans